Damien here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. I always enjoy checking out new pens hitting the market, and it is one of those pens I have for you today. It is the latest release from the German manufacturer Otto Hutt. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was able to share with you their Design C, and what I have here with me now is their Design 8. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and unique features of the Design 8, uh, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons. I'll demonstrate how to operate the unique filling system and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Kenro Industries, who are the U.S. distributors for Auto Hut for providing this pen on loan for review. It arrives in this box. The top slides off and then lifts off and underneath we have a warranty card uh, there is uh, use and care information uh, then there is a polishing cloth which is always nice to have and then we have the pen this is the auto hut design 8. Uh, like the design c the design 8 is a partnership between auto hut and the designer mark braun uh, Mark is a prominent figure in German product and industrial design, specializing in a lot of minimalistic design. Though, I personally wouldn't categorize this particular pen as having a minimalistic design. Uh, this is not a limited edition. The Design 8 is, edition, is an addition to their standard lineup of fountain pens. Uh, Otto Hutt is a family-owned business based in the Black Forest region of Germany, uh, close to France and Switzerland, and that is where they manufacture and assemble these pens by hand. Uh, the Design 8 is metal. It's made from brass, aluminum, and steel. Um, coming in at 80 grams total, it is a fairly heavy pen. Uh, the distinguishing feature of this pen, however, are the grooves on the cap, which in this orientation are horizontal, then they encircle the barrel, and then they're horizontal again on the piston knob. You can see here a microscope shot of the grooves. The outside of the pen has ruthenium plating, a PVD coating, and then the exterior is sandblasted and given what the company describes as a satin finish. According to the designer, Mark Braun, the design language of the lines of the pen help instruct the user the direction in which each of the elements should be operated. Uh, Braun feels that design should be language without words. The cap should be twisted. The barrel should be gripped. And then the piston knob twisted. Um, he also wanted to celebrate guilloche. Now, some people pronounce it guilloche and others guilloche. I'm going to stick to guilloche just because it's more fun to say. Uh, let's take a look at the cap. Uh, the end of the cap is smooth and slightly indented. I really like the design element of the top of the cap and the interaction with the clip. Uh, the top of the clip is engraved with the Auto Hut logo and remains flat in contrast to the slight curvature on the top of the cap. Uh, it's a subtle design element, but I really like it. The clip is rounded, straight, and rather thick. It's hinged, and I feel it's size appropriate for this pen. The cap is straight and devoid of any band or branding um, other than the logo on the top of the clip. The transition from the cap to the barrel is smooth, and I like the visual element of the lines transitioning from one direction to the other. The barrel is straight until you reach the end where we have a medium-sized step down to the piston knob. This unique piston filling system is what Auto Hut calls their twist and pull filling mechanism. It was first introduced on the Design C, and they wanted to introduce the mechanism into a more mainstream writing instrument. After the size comparisons, I'll sh show you a closer look at this filling system. It took me a while to get the hang of it, but once you see how it operates, I find it works well. On the side of the piston knob, it is laser engraved with Germany, the number of this pen, uh, the 08 signifies the design 8, and this particular pen is the number 0. Uh, the artist proof of a model, as it were. Here's a close-up of that laser engraving. Uh, it looks very clean and sharp. Then the end of the piston knob is slightly concave, similar to the top of the cap. Um, I also like how when you are holding the pen to write, the engraving on the piston knob is actually on the underside of the pen. Having it visible when uh, you were using the pen would kind of break up the aesthetics, in my opinion. 
the cap twists off in just under two rotations. Um, I will say that this pen has a very solid feel to it. The capping is very smooth and satisfying. It just feels like a quality writing instrument. Once you remove the cap, you are presented with this very nice 18 karat gold nib. I like the imprint on this nib. I think it looks really classy. The nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. And here's a look at the plastic feed. While I typically prefer silver colored nibs as opposed to gold or two-toned, I feel the gold really works well for the Design 8. It adds a, a pop of color against the gray and the black of the rest of the pen. Uh, then we have the section. Um, I feel this section will be a bit polarizing. It is a PVD coated steel and it angles up. Uh, it kind of looks a bit like a coupling you would use to repair a hose. It's a unique design I haven't seen on a fountain pen before. Uh, it does do an excellent job of helping you maintain a solid grip on your pen. Your grip is not going anywhere. Uh, the feeling of the individual ledges on your hand takes some getting used to. My initial reaction when seeing the section was to think that does not look very comfortable. But after a while using the pen, uh, I find that I don't mind the design. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but the pen is rather heavy. Uh, the barrel on its own is 50 grams. Um, I was using this pen to write some letters, and I will say that I did experience some hand fatigue after maybe half a page of writing on some A4 paper. You know, at first, I thought this was due to the, like, the sheer weight of the pen. So to compare, I switched over to like the heaviest pen in my collection, which is a Keras Pen Company ink in solid copper. The barrel of that pen comes at 77 grams. Um, but with that pen, I really didn't experience any fatigue. So you know, I'll say that the, the more that I used the Design 8, the less fatigue I felt. Uh, so I was a bit perplexed. Uh, the pen is well balanced and well proportioned. There was just something about it that was causing me uh, to use muscles into my hand that I didn't ordinarily use. But like I said, it got better the more that I used the pen. The threads on the section only take up a small portion at the back, and then there's a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. The cap does post, kind of. Now, I'm taking into consideration this is number zero, so it might not be this way on production models, but the cap posts easily down to about this point. Now, you could force it down further if you'd like, but then it becomes problematic because in order to remove the cap, you end up putting what I feel is an inordinate amount of pulling force on the piston knob. So I would have a fear that it could potentially be damaged. Plus, the gap here isn't the most attractive. But in the end, I feel it's a bit of a moot point because with the overall heft of this pen, posting it significantly backweights it and throws off the balance. So you're going to want to use this pen unposted. With the overall weight of this pen, um, I don't feel it's something you'll want to keep in a shirt breast pocket, um, but it would do okay in my opinion, like on an inside pocket of a sports coat or a suit jacket or something along those lines. You will find the Auto Hut Design 8 at a number of retailers for right around $1,200. While that is an expensive price for a pen, I don't feel that it's out of the line with what you receive for this pen. With some higher price pens, you might think to yourself, you know, man, is it really worth it? With this pen, um, I saw and felt the value right away, which is a good thing. Uh, are there some things I would change about it? Sure. Um, the section is a bit quirky. Uh, the filling system can take a little bit of getting used to. Um, and in my opinion, posting really isn't an option, even though it was a stated goal of the company to have this pen postable. But there is a lot to like about it. Um, I do love the overall design. I think it looks sleek and professional. And it does feel very solid in the hand, and it feels like a quality writing instrument. Um, I like the alternating striping, and I love the functionality of the clip and how it interacts with the top of the cap. And as you'll see in the writing sample, the 18 karat gold nib performs very well. Thanks again. Go out to Kenro Industries for giving me the opportunity to take a closer look at this pen. Uh, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons. I'll show you how to operate this unique filling system and a writing sample. So here we go with some size comparisons for the Auto Hut Design 8. Um, here it is with a Mont Blanc Alfred Hitchcock. 
Uh, here it is with a classic pen LB5. And then here it is with a pen that I, you know, I've never reviewed a Platinum Azumo. Um, I do believe that uh, I might be reviewing a special edition uh, of this pen from a retailer coming up in the near future, but that is what it looks like with an Azumo. Then in regard to some other pens, here it is with a ASC a Bologna Extra Arco. Uh, and then here it is with a Pilot Custom Arushi. And then finally, here it is with another auto hut that you will see reviewed in the somewhat near future, which is their design for Blue Wave. I know I've shown this before, but the, uh, the patterning here on the striping on the barrel is rather cool. And that's what it looks like in comparison to the Design 8. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, this is what it looks like with the Azumo and the Design 4 and then the Classic Pens LB5. Now, I said I was going to show you the interesting filling mechanism here, which they call pull and twist. Uh, and so what you end up doing on this uh, piston here as you pull it out. It has a number of different positions to it. Uh, it is kind of in its secure position at its very bottom and you can't twist it. Uh, then if you list it, lift it up to its middle position, I liken that to like neutral on a stick shift car. And you can fully twist this and nothing is going to happen. But then if you pull it back a third to its third position, now the piston is engaged and it acts just like a normal piston would. Now I have this inked up right now, so I'm not gonna twist this, but you can um, twist this and it has a nice ratcheting system as well. And so you can fill up the pen just like you normally would for a piston. And then once you're done with that, you can put it down to its second position and then twist it around until you can then uh, put it down in its first position. Uh, like I said, it's one of those things that just takes you a little while of getting used to, but once you do get used to it, I find it rather natural to use. So here we go with the writing sample for the Auto Hut. And this is the Design 8. This is a medium 18 karat gold nib. And the ink we're using today is one I've showed a lot, but it's one of my favorites, which is Diamine Communication Breakdown. This is what the ink looks like. Um, it's a nice kind of reddish brown with a little bit of uh, sheen to it. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to Diamine Oxblood, uh, as well as something like Levenger Pomegranate. This is what the bottle looks like. Uh, this was part of Diamine's rock and roll collection uh, that was originally available just through German retailers. Um, I have found that you can get them uh, on Amazon now as well if you'd like to pick some of these up. There's a number of really cool colors in this rock and roll series. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. I had some ink on the bottom of my finger there, so I wondered why all of a sudden something showed up there. Uh, this 18 karat gold nib is outstanding. Um, it's fairly smooth and flexible, has a decent bounce to it. Um, you can get a decent amount of line variation out of it. This is a, a very pleasant 18 karat gold nib. The ink flow on it is very nice in regard to reverse writing. It's very pleasant and performs nicely. And then in regard to some reverse writing, or not reverse writing, some uh, fast writing, as a siren goes by, I don't know if you could hear that. We're just gonna keep on recording. 
There we go. And uh, there's no e uh, issue with the feed keeping up whatsoever. So here is the Auto Hut Design 8. Um, I think it looks really sharp and really classy. Uh, and it's something that is a really good addition to the Auto Hut lineup and glad that I was able to take a look at it. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.